Hi, I'm Joanna Adams. I'm one of the Open Research Team in the Library. Today, we're going to cover Open Access Research Publications. So we'll cover what Open Access is, what are the benefits, what you can do to make your research Open Access, and how the Open Research Team can help you. So open access means that your research outputs are free to read and download for anyone with an internet connection at no charge. There are two main routes to open access, whether that is via the publisher website or via deposit a version of the manuscript in the institutional or subject repository. You may need to comply with some funder requirements, um, for example, UKRI or the Wellcome Trust. There is the Research Excellence Framework, REF, which everybody needs to comply with. And ideally, the university would like to have a copy of all published research outputs made open access in ORA, our institutional repository. There are many benefits of open access. The more people that see your work means they'll get higher citation rates. Practitioners will be able to apply your findings. Policymakers will be able to access and use your research. The public can access your findings. Taxpayers will get value for their money. You will be compliant with any grant rules that you need to comply with. And researchers in developing countries who wouldn't otherwise be able to pay for access to your research will be able to see it. Now, the two main routes to open access are gold and green. Gold open access is when the final published version of record is made immediately open access on the publisher website. It is usually published under an open license. However, there is usually a cost involved with gold open access, whether that is through an article process in charge for an APC, paid by your funder, the institution, or it might be covered by an institutional open access agreement, which we will talk about a bit more. The other route is green open access. When the author deposits a version of the research output in an institutional or subject repository, there are restrictions placed by the publisher. So it's usually the accepted manuscript, which is the final draft, including corrections from peer review, but before the publisher formatting and logos has been applied. Uh, typically, there would be an embargo placed on the accepted manuscript being made open access in the depository, and that could be up to 12 months from publication for sciences or up to 24 months for the arts and humanities. But recently, funders and institutions have been taking a stance against publishers, and you may now be able to use the rights retention to make sure that you get immediate open access and an open license for the accepted manuscripts. And there is no cost to this, it is free. So I'll tell you about the UKRI open access policy. This is the main um, funder that we deal with, but there are other funders who have similar open access policies. If you are funded, check your funder's open access requirements to see if there's anything that you need to do. If you're not sure, get in touch with the Open Access team. So UKRI have had an open access policy for some time, it's 2013 that the, the last one started, but funders um, and researchers have been frustrated recently with the slow transition to open access and they've tightened up their open access policies. So this new policy applies to articles and conference papers published with an international standard serial number, or ISSN, that were submitted for publication from the 1st of April 2022. So now that UKRI require immediate open access, either by publishing the version of the record for the VOR in a journal or on a publisher platform. The author's accepted manuscripts must also be made open access, um, and that should be deposited in institutional or subject repository. Now, this is a new requirement that there are no embargoes allowed. It must be made open access immediately on first online publication, and it must also now be made open under an open license, which would be CCBY or CCBYND by exception. 
That has always been the case for the version of record, but this is a new requirement for the accepted manuscripts which previously embargoes were allowed. You will also need to now um, include a data access statement explaining how to access the underlying research data accompanying the article. Even if that is to say that there is no data available, it must be included. You will no longer be able to pay an article processing charge for articles in hybrid or subscription journals unless they are covered by an open access agreement, which I will talk a bit more about in a minute. The open access policy will also apply to books, chapters and edited collections from the 1st of January 2024. The requirements are similar to those for journal articles, but they won't be quite so strict to begin with. So for those types, the final version of the publication or the accepted manuscript should be made open access either through the publisher's website or platform or through an institutional repository. There will be embargo allowed on the accepted manuscript being available um, or the full text, and that will be within maximum of 12 months from publication. Open license will be required um, with the CCBY as the preferred license, but more restrictive licenses will be permitted. UKRI are putting out information um, regularly about this, but if you have got any questions, get in touch with us at the Open Research email. Now, if you are publishing in a hybrid or a subscription journal that is not covered by one of our open access agreements and you won't be able to pay for open access using funder and um, block grants, but you may use this rights retention statement. And all you have to do is include a sentence with your submission, whether that is in the acknowledgement section or with covering letter if you're writing one. And it will make clear to the publisher at the time you submit an article for publication that you will be making any resulting accepted manuscript open access under an open licence without embargo. It is a good idea to apply this to all of your submissions because then if you're not accepted at your first choice of publication and you're directed onto another journal, you have covered all your bases. We are finding that a lot of publishers now are allowing um, use of the rights retention statement. There might be an extra step that you might have to take or um, they're allowing it for funded authors. If you're not sure or you want to check before you submit, just get in touch with us at that open research email and we'll give you some advice. <clears throat> The university, in line with a lot of other institutions, will be introducing a new research publications policy from May 2023. This is meant to be a supportive measure to help authors achieve immediate open access without restriction, <clears throat> meaning that you retain more rights over your work while still keeping the freedom to publish where you want to. And this will automatically comply with funder and def open access requirements. And it will just be the same as the UKI policy. You'll just apply a statement to your submission and um, the university will support you with any problems. Um, and this is optional. If you do want to opt out of it for any reason, you don't need permission, but we would ask that you just let us know that you are and the reasons why in order that we can identify any areas where there are issues or where further support is needed. And there will be more information and comms coming out on this quite soon. So look out for that. Now the other open access policy that you might need to comply with is the Research Excellence Framework or DEF. Um, even if you think, well, I'm just a postgrad just now, I don't need to, I'm not going to be eligible to submit to DEF, your co-authors might be. So it's really important that you're familiar with open access requirements and that you check with your co-authors um, what they might need to do. So the last DEF is submitted in March 2021 and the entire DEF is under review at the moment, including the open access policy. 
But until further notice, we'll carry on following the DEF 2021 open access policy. So like the funder policies, it applies to journal articles and conference papers published with an ISSN. And you can use either of the two routes to open access. Um, so if you publish gold open access and the version of record is immediately open access, that means that you are compliant. If you take the gain route and you deposit a copy of the accepted manuscript in the institutional repository, that should be as soon after acceptance as possible, but it can be up to three months after a first online publication. And at the moment, embargoes are still permitted. That would be up to 12 months for sciences and up to 24 months for social sciences. We can help you with getting your manuscripts into PURE. Whenever you have a paper accepted for publication, if you email the paper accepted email with a copy of the accepted manuscripts and confirmation of acceptance from the publisher, our team will upload that to PURE for you um, in compliance with the REF open access policies and publisher self-archiving permissions. <laughs> When we're talking about open licenses, these are usually the Creative Commons license. These are a suite of open access licenses that set out terms of your use for the end user. The CCBY license is the most liberal license. It allows your work to be shared, changed, um, reused, as long as credit is given to the creator. We, this is the license that we recommend because it allows maximum reuse of your research and it is the license that is usually mandated by funders. There are a couple of variations. If you want your research to be shared, um, you use adapted, but not for commercial purposes, you can apply the NC license. Or there is the non-derivatives, which mean that your work can be shared, but it can't be changed. This um, license, the CCBYND, is allowed as an exception by the funders, but you need to apply for that. You will need to have a valid reason for applying that license. Okay, now the systems that we have at the university are PURE, which is the research information system. And it's not just your research outputs that are recorded here, but any other related research activity. If you have awards, prizes, you're attended conferences or presented, or you're a member of a society, you might want to add this information into PURE. And the reason for that is that all of the information that you add to PURE that you want to make public goes into the Pure Research Portal, which is like a giant CV for the university. And here you can see not only your research outputs, but your networks, where you've been working, which countries you've been working with other researchers in, um, if you've got data sets and any other activities will all be displayed on this public research portal. For data sets, it is a good idea to Although they will be likely held in an external data repository, such as Dryad, Figshare, or a different one for it, depending on your subject, it just means that you've got a complete record of all your research in Pure, which will display on the public research portal. So the data sets will just enter the details and will link out to whichever repository the data is actually sitting in. And it just, you know, it just means that everything is available there on the Pure Research Portal. It is important that you keep your Pure profile up to date. Um, also, the information in Pure goes through to your staff web pages if you're using them. So if you set your staff web page to display publications, the bibliography will come from Pure. And also, it's just really important for REF to make sure that all your outputs are deposited um, and up to date to make sure that they comply with the DEF open access requirements. You can add information to Pure yourself and for like your activities, awards and prizes, we would ask that you do that yourself. 
but whenever you have a paper accepted for publication, email paper accepted and we will get that in for you. If you do add papers yourself, um, just drop them a line at Paper Accepted to let them know and they will have a look at them, make sure they're, all the information needed is there and they will validate them. New researchers can import your publications into Pure. If you've got an Excel file from your previous institution, we can upload that for you. Um, everyone can set up an automated search for publications from bibliographic databases like Scopus, Web of Science. You just need to go into your Pure profile. Um, all academic staff and postgraduate researchers will have access to Pure. Just use your university user ID and password. And you can just go on and switch on the, the searches that you want. And it will do regular searches through the databases anything linked to your profile that's not already impure it will import and the library staff will update the records you might also want to use orchid if you don't already have an orchid id it is a unique persistent identifier for an individual researcher you own and control it and it means that you get credit for your own research you can connect that id with all of your professional information not just your research outputs, but affiliations, grants, publications, peer review, and more. <clears throat> that idea will allow you to share information between systems and institutions, um, saves you a lot of time in manually entering the same information. It connects with Pure, you can go to the toolkit to see how to do that. Um, and the use of ORCID is becoming much more popular. It's recommended by funders just now, but it may be in future that it is actually a requirement of REF and funder open access policies. So we do recommend that you adopt it. And um, it's really easy just to go to the ORCID link there and set up an account. So I've mentioned open access agreements. The way these agreements work is usually the institution pays a subscription to read a journal or for their members to read. Now, with these open access agreements, the university will still pay a subscription, which should reduce over time, but we will also pay a fee to make research open access or publish open access. Article process and charges, which are common at the moment, can be quite high. It can be anything from between two and a half thousand to up to nine thousand pounds for your nature titles. Um, so the way these agreements work is that the university pays for that open access and eventually the journal publishing model will flip from subscription to fully open access, which means there will no longer be a subscription and individual article process and charges will not be required. These agreements are really good because they're increasing the amount of open access articles that we can publish and they are open to researchers who do not have research funding and otherwise wouldn't have been able to pay to publish open access. It also reduces the admin burden um, for researchers and for the institution. They are sometimes known as transitional agreements or read and publish. We have got agreements with most of the, well, all of the big publishers now. Um, there are slight differences between them. For example, Wiley includes both hybrid and fully open access titles, so it covers nearly all of the Wiley journals, whereas Elsevier it only covers the hybrid journals. So if you want to publish in a fully open access journal from Elsevier, there will still be an article process in charge. So if you do want to do that, just check and make sure that first your article is covered by the agreement, and um, if it's not, and you need to pay a fee, make sure that you have got funding, whether that's from your school or from the block grants. Um, funding is limited, so do make sure that you have funds available before you commit to publish. And you will get the full list of agreements on our web pages. So the way that agreements work in practice is that the publisher will identify you as eligible 
um, by your affiliation. You need to be the corresponding author. Use your university of email university email address wherever possible, and you will be offered open access under the agreement. You just follow the instructions. Make sure you choose that CCDY Creative Commons license, um, especially if you've got research funding that requires that. Some of the requests are actually sent to the library for approval. Some of them are automatic. If you have any questions about the agreements or you encountered any problems, email us at the Open Research email. We are aware that there are some issues for postgrads. Um, you've carried out the research at the university, but by the time you come to publish, you have with the Open Research team and we'll advise you on those publisher open access agreements. Um, if you need to include a rights retention statement, we will advise you on that. And just any questions at all, get in touch with us um, at that Open Research email. Okay, that is us. Thank you for listening. Our contact details are here. We've got the Open Research email um, for queries, paper accepted when you have a paper accepted for publication, and you'll find a lot of information on our Open Research web pages. Okay, thank you for listening.